Okay, my friends, grab your popcorn, tea, coffee, whatever you want, because on this video, I'm going to play for you my favorite drum libraries ever, the libraries that I've been using the most for productions, for client work, for drum replacement. I'm going to play all of them live for you on the keyboard. Let's get started. To start off, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to show you here today. So today, I'm going to show you my favorite acoustic drum libraries that I've been using in my workflow for many, many years now. Some of them are newer additions. I'm gonna talk about them. Some of them I've been using for ages. And these are acoustic drums, so I'm not going to show you any electronic drums in this one, but I'm going to show you how I chose these libraries and what are the criteria and what each library has to offer. And hopefully at the end of the video, you will be able to tell which library might be for you and which library you might want to invest in and which might be the additional library that you might want to get if you already have a few drum libraries. Straight away, I want to say this video is not sponsored by any of these companies that I'm going to show you here today. These are my personal picks. But if you want to support the channel, maybe you want to check out my Modern 80s drum kit, which is a really good drum kit if you're interested in drums, and the Apollo expansion for patch shop if you're interested in synth sounds and beautiful cinematic textures. I'm going to try and have links to each one of these libraries down below. Let's get started with the first one. The first one is the Groove Agent The Kit. Now a light version of the kit, Kit SC, is included in Cubase. So if you're using Cubase, make sure you have this library installed because even the light version is amazing. So for me, this library is a really solid acoustic drum kit library. This can go from really, really raw to quite a bit of a process sound. So I like the fact that we have all this bleed. So if you notice, if I play the toms, you know, they're big, they're beefy, and you can hear a little bit of the bleed from the snare. And I absolutely love the toms on this library. Check it out. They're nice and tight. and they sound great in a mix. Now, this is not one of the most processed libraries that I'm going to show you here today, but it's a really solid library that will give you a very good all-round sound. Of course, we have different ways. For example, you can have a muffled snare, you can have, you know, a normal snare, a towel snare. So the full library does make a big difference. Now, I'm not going to go too deep on any one of these libraries because the video is going to be hours and hours long. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do a review for any one of these libraries. And if I get enough requests, I might do it. And I'm going to stick with the Groove Agent expansion. And this is the Simon Phillips Studio Drums. Now, if you don't know who Simon Phillips is, Google it, you know, and you will understand why this library sounds so good. Let's play it. So it's a massive drum sound. And this has a lot of different like elements, like octobands and all these things. I'm going to load another preset. So these drums for me sound really big. I love layering them uh, with other drum kits sometimes and 
they give you this really big spacious sound, really nice and natural, uh, they're not heavily processed. Now the next library is a library that I started using back in the summer and I love this library. These are the Herds drums and this is a library that differs to what I played up to this point because they are mix ready. So if you want a really modern, punchy, in your face sound, these drums will give you this with minimal effort. It's very easy to build your own drum kits and let me play them. drums come in three packs, the blue pack, the red pack and the white pack. Let me play a preset from the blue pack. And a preset from the red pack. So these drums will give you a sound straight away, straight away. They are so punchy, so powerful. They have a very contemporary sound. So very nice. The interface is nice and clean. Actually, I'm going to make a dedicated video about this library. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can see everything. But like I said, this video is not sponsored. So please allow me a little shameless plug. This is my own modern 80s drum kit and these are not acoustic drums these are drums that i would use for electronic music for synth wave for pop music pretty much everything that's up in the charts right now but also i would use them for sound replacement so if you have like a weak snare you can enhance it with a modern 80s drum kit i have a video about the modern 80s drum kit you can check it right here but let me play them very quickly and then we're going to move on to the other libraries And the beautiful thing with the modern 80s drum kit is the sauces. So I can activate the kick sauce, add some thump, some definition, and then the snare sauce, punch, tightness, really tight or really long, clap width, make your claps nice and wide, and I want to add a little bit of reverb for this snare. And why not add this characteristic 80s gate? Some... Yeah, some toms reverb. You know, so these are really good if you want to beef up a snare. Just for this snare. I can actually reverse the snare as well. You know, do all these crazy things. So, I'm not gonna dwell too much on the Modern 80s drum kit. Check out the video and if you like it and grab a copy, you're really supporting the channel. So thank you so much in advance. Let's move on to the next library. And this is, who doesn't know, Superior Drummer. Now, Superior Drummer is uh, the pinnacle of drum instruments, right? So I'm going to play a sound very quickly. So where Superior Drummer excels at is that it's really, really detailed, okay? The library is massive. We're talking about hundreds of gigs, has every little detail that you could wish for. You know, you can mix, it has grooves. I'm not going to go into the grooves or any one of these libraries because I never use them personally, but they might be a really useful thing. I know for many people, there are two things that you should be aware about Superior Drummer. The presets are really good and the engine itself is really powerful. It has some really interesting ways to layer snares and all these things. What I would say though, is that this is an instrument that I would go for if you're really, really serious about getting the most detailed acoustic drum kit sound ever. 
because if you're looking for a ready to go sound, it might be too much. You know what I mean? So it's very, very detailed. And the other thing that for me, it's a little bit of an issue is that when I play and for some reason I activate aftertouch on my MIDI keyboard, you get these cymbal chokes, okay? So, which is a great feature, but it's triggered way too easily. So when I play, see? So what I have to do in Cubase to combat this is I have to activate the input transformer and filter the aftertouch messages when I'm playing live. And that's why I'm using Cubase because all these things are so easy to do. I'm gonna play a few more presets. This is the IELT. I'm going to keep the clean kits here. I like the Yamaha quite a bit. And as you can see, two gigs of RAM just for one drum kit. They're very detailed. But if you're looking for realism, you can't beat Superior Drummer. It's very, very powerful. Let's play the Pearl as well. Now the next library I want to show you is the Steven Slade Drums 5. And to be honest with you, I've been using Steven Slade drums for like, since they came out, like a decade now? Might be, might be more actually. These drums are a staple, right? So basically they're super processed. They're great again for sound replacement, for drum replacement, for snare replacement, kick drum replacement. They sound big, they sound modern. I mean, the sound is so characteristic that I immediately recognize these drums when I hear them in a production. So uh, for me, that's the only downside for Steven Slade drums. They've been around for such a long time. And even though when they first came out, you know, every time I was using it for an artist or for a production or for a client, people were going crazy about them. Now, I find that sometimes I need to reach out for newer sounds. But still, 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 they're so good. And uh, this is the CLA hybrid. This is the beefy dry. I, I love the sound of the Steven Slade drums. They also have some signature sounds from artists. You know, the chili, this iconic drum kit. And it goes without saying that all these drums that I'm showing you complement each other very nicely. So there's a reason why I have all these drum libraries because sometimes I want to layer three or four snares from different libraries. And one of my favorite expansions for the Steven Slade drums is the CLA uh, drums. So they're really nice. You know, they have this kind of CLA sound that, you know, if you're looking for this, I use them mainly for replacement. What a sound. The next libraries I want to show you come from Addictive Drums too. Addictive Drums are really great. They have so many different libraries and they sound so distinct. But I want to show you some libraries from them that I think sound really unique. The first library is the Vintage Dry and check this out. Great dry sound. I love it for funk. I love it for soul. Beautiful. Let me just show you a few more. Disco Dirt. So if you're looking for this kind of sound, Vintage Dry is one of my favorite libraries when it comes to this dry, uh, punchy, very dead sound. And the other library that I want to show you from Addictive Drums is the Blue Oyster. I love this for, you know, injecting this kind of Motown vibe uh, to my productions. So even though I might not use these drums on their own because they sound very, let me show you.
you know, with the tambourine. You know, this is so Motown, so, so good. Let's try this one. I mean, <laughs> puts a smile on my face. The next library is maybe the most uh, intricate library that I'm going to show you here today. And this is drums of St. Paul from Sound Iron. These drums were recorded in a cathedral. Let me show you. Kick drums. Snares. Toms. And you can play with all these mic positions. So these drums can be really useful if you want to get this kind of stadium kind of sound. So again, I would use them for layering. And they're also very cinematic sometimes. This really helps. This library is extremely affordable. So it's a niche kind of library, but nevertheless, the sound is really unique. And it's going to be really hard to get this sound that you can get with this library. The next one is an old favorite of mine, and it's the Native Instruments Studio Drama. I mean, this library sounds so good. I think it's so versatile. You can use it on pretty much anything. For my taste, I always like to make the snare a little bit tighter because it has a long tail. But this you can fix very easily in the mix. That's my only gripe, but the toms are nice. And, you know, if you have Native Instruments complete, you have this already. This is an, you know, old school library, but still very good. The next one is also from Native Instruments, and this is the Abbey Road Vintage Drummer. And this is a library that I would use for jazz, for when I want like this kind of old school brush drum sound. So it sounds beautiful. Now the symbols. And you have you know, the brushes and everything. So really nice library. The next library I want to show you is the Circle Drum Samples Dead 1975. And this is a library that, again, I like when I want to have this really dead, really kind of muffled sound. It doesn't have an interface, so it works in contact. Uh, and I think also in some other platforms, but the contact is the only one I really use from the other platforms that they support. I wish they supported Groove Agent, but they don't. It doesn't look fancy, but it sounds nice. Another thing I wish they supported would be GM mapping because the kit is all over the place especially when you use GM. I don't know why many developers choose to go for a proprietary mapping. GM works so well. Why change it? Many of these libraries that I showed you here today don't use GM and you have to load a preset in order to load the GM mapping. Now, here you don't have this, but I can still work around it because it's not too far from GM. So for example, I mean, this symbol has no place here. This is reserved for toms. This is where the symbols are. Sounds so good. Let's try another one.
So there you go, my friends. These are my top libraries that I use all the time as of today. I have way more, of course, in my system. And of course, I couldn't show you all of them. But if you like this video, I might make a part two. Let me know in the comments down below. And in the comments down below, let me know which one is your favorite drum library, which one is the one that you use the most. Maybe you can show me one that I haven't tried. I'd be really, really interested. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a like, and also check out my instruments right here, Modern 80s Drum Kit and Apollo. Like I said, I'm going to try and have a link for all these libraries down below. Take care of yourselves, happy drumming, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!